trying to get this thing set right and you can't really do that until you start the video so give me a second here i'm trying to get you guys close enough but yet where i can still see what i'm doing because we are going in depth on these two reels right we've got so look at the parts black knight 2 and the dark wolf ultra are torn down and as you can clearly see they're the same reel but nobody's gonna know. They're the same reel, but nobody's gonna know. I don't think anybody was hiding it, but these are the same reel, cosmetically different from the outside to, you know, for each uh, company they were made for, or brand made, I'm definitely 100% sure by the same factory, which I don't know what factory that is. But anyway, this video is not about that. What What is this video about? This video is about putting these two little guys right here inside this reel little bitty bearings I already switched out one of them replacing these little bitty bushings which is actually a plus that there's bushings in here and allows you to put bearings if you guys remember this guy doesn't give you that option and there's several reels the Daiwa Alphas and some of them you can put a bearing, they'll, they'll, they'll uh, put out a reel, and it'll have a bushing here. And I'm getting ready to show you as I take this apart. And you can put a bearing there. They don't put one. I don't know why. If, if they charge you anything over a $49 reel, it should come with all the bearings. These bearings, if, if I can get them fairly cheap, the placemaker putting these bearings in can surely pay a little more for the 12 bearings than they do for the bushing. The bushing's got to cost something. They're just not free. So they got to cost something. The price difference. And some of you will be like, well, there's no performance gain, and sometimes the bushing will outlast the bearing. I don't care. <laughs> they, uh, anything over a $49 reel should come with all the bearings that are possible to put in the reel, plain and simple. So what we're doing today other than I was comparing them, and I'm going to do a little other stuff here, but I wanted to show you the, if you go to do this on your own, and I guess I've shown it in every, every video when I talk about the bearings on these, but I'll show it one more time. And I'm not showing you for the brand because I don't even think you can get Team Durango parts anymore. But right there, I think Fastlane just happened to have it on their wall still. That size. You'll need that size, which is a pretty common size. I think that, if I'm not mistaken, that may be even, and that's the bigger one. That may be the same size that you're uh, on the Daiwa or Shimano. The handle, the knob bearings, I think, are the same size. Uh, that's the same size that for the... And this is the one that's going over here by the gear side. And I'm pretty sure that Daiwa's are the same size. I'm not sure about Shimano. So you'll need that size bearing and that size. This is the one that they had to order for me by... I've never even heard of that company. Blade, number one by design. But that's the size you want to look for if you're wanting to get these bearings and put them in yourself. I got one left after I do these two reels. We've already done the first Black Knight 2 I picked up. I've already put the two in the other Black Knight 2. So all that's left is this little guy right here. See him poking his head out? So before I went into detail, what I'm going to do, this video is also sh going to show you, and I don't know how long it's going to be. You know my videos are long. I'm going to tear this down completely and put it back together. Well, not completely. I'm not taking that thing off. That's a little trap door deal to lock in the side plate. I'm not pulling this off because all it is under there, there is a bearing, and I, I checked the original Black Knight too, and I'm pretty sure the way that's spinning, and I did on the other one, I checked it, it's, it's a bearing. And I'm not pulling this off. There's a bearing down in there. And I mean, that's the only like to maintenance ones. I don't really recommend if say you're and if you guys can tell these don't have a lot of grease on. Them. That's another point I was going to make out. I probably had a little grease, but you don't really have to. When you service a reel, you don't have to do a complete tear down. You don't have to tear this apart if you don't want to. A lot of times, just say every season or something, a lot of times I'll just pull the, you know, plate off like this. You're going to have all the gears and stuff still in there. And I'll just add a little grease or oil where I think it needs to be if it looks like it's drying up. Now, if anything starts looking discolored, I'll do a complete teardown, clean it, and all that. But, but a lot of times, these reels, 
uh, will go a long time before they need a complete teardown. Depends on how much fishing you do. If you're out fishing all the time, I mean, I, I fish quite a bit, and I feel that I can go, I don't know, a while. I think I had this thing almost two years before I, I did finally tear it down, the Aldebaran BFS. So probably in, you know, with a lot of fish in the lingual, not the lingual, this guy, I wouldn't have torn down if it wasn't for the fact that the anti-reverse went out. So I went ahead and uh, did a little bit of clean, not much. I didn't like tear it fully down. So anyway, but let's say you are going to tear this down because either you want to clean it or you want to, uh, and most reels are very similar to this one. You want to, you know, switch out bearings or you just want to clean it. So the trickiest part, to me anyway, about this whole teardown, other than maybe if you take you go into pulling these springs out. They can, let's see, there's a little spring right in there. That can get tricky somewhat if you want to like switch out the uh, the thumb bar. Like say if you, some Shimano's and certain Abu Garcia's, you can get them aftermarket thumb bars and you want to switch that out. That's a little bit of a chore and some reels are a little different when it comes to that. But we're not doing that today. The trickiest part of what we're doing today is right here, so I figured I'd save it showing you how I get it apart and then how I get that little and if you, for those of you who don't know and for those of you that worked on RC cars or fishing reels you know what that is called that is a notorious C clip and almost all of RC has done away with that and like well how do they do away with that Charlie very simply they tap that out and put a uh, flathead or you could put whatever kind of screw there to where you put a little touch of Loctite screw a screw into there to hold whatever down instead of that c clips what they've done on hinge pins and everything else and i don't know why the fishing manufacturers haven't figured that part out yet i guess this is the cheapest lightest way to do it so i'm trying to get it to focus here and i'll show you the best thing i found and of course my that's always what my exacto blades look like about five minutes into putting a new one in it looks like that tip gone which actually makes it better for what I do. So you gotta kinda turn it, and there is a little space in there, a little bit, and you gotta get something very sharp or pointy in there. And then you gotta hold your fingers just right and in your tongue, because you're gonna pry that off. Give me a minute. Okay, see that? Easy, right? Years of experience. So you don't lose stuff. So that was the hardest part of the takedown. Now the putting back together will be a little rough. So the, what you have up here, there's actually two washers. And I'm trying to look around the camera now. I can't look through the camera and work on it. So hopefully I'll be holding it where you guys can see it. And this little skinny guy, yeah, once you get him lined up, this thing f almost falls out. So then you'll want to pull this off just so you don't lose it. So you want to get them, set them down by your C-clip. And that's why I use, actually, the best thing I found is a white paper towel laid over. And I have this rubberized mat under it so nothing really bounces. And you can see it where it lands. Okay, so then you're, you're down to here. And I've already pulled the other stuff apart. And I'll show you how to put that back together. But So this you can simply pull out. And the, the little bushing may come with it or may stay on this one. It stayed. The other one it came out with it. So anyway, you need to get that out of there. Okay, you can set that down. Now here, there's another little... Whoa, i, I got to get in the camera zone here. Here, let me tilt this camera. There's a little pin right here, so you're going to need to pull it out, don't lose it, take the gear off, and then on this one they've got a little bitty shim, see that? And you'll want to put that back in. Technically it's so skinny I don't think you have to, you probably would never notice if it's in or not. So, let me set it down. You're going to grab your bearing. Whoa. I tried. You guys ever tried to do anything looking through a camera? It is a nightmare. 
so then you just go back together. Thing. Now I can put the other bearing on and just push it all through. So the other bearing you can some you can't some you have to like put this through and then you'll slide the bearing on the other side. But this way this one's designed. I didn't have to take any of that out. If you did, that stuff all will slide right out. I think that is a bot that's just I don't know. If, is anybody even watching? No, I think it was a bot. You guys, somebody somewhere at some time will appreciate me for putting this video together, showing you how to do this. So you just push that through there. Okay, that's in. Then you just, with one of your fingers over here, hold that up. So then you're back to this. You got this push back through. Now you got to go back with your two washers, the big one on bottom. That little black one, which is the same as on the other side, real skinny, goes on top. Now, here is the hardest part of working on any reel. You got to get this little guy popped back on before he flies across the room, never to be seen again. There's only one thing in the world that comes up missing more than a 10 millimeter wrench, and it's that little dude right there. And... That's the God's honest truth. I'm telling you. So can we get it back in? I'm two for two so far. Kind of like a field goal kicker. It might shank one. And if this thing just takes off and goes missing, it'll be game game over in the video. Now what I do a lot of times, I got pretty big fingers, hands, whatever. So I'll flip that thing around with my screwdriver get it where I want it you know what because I can see it what's going on and you want to get it started and you'll want to hold that little shim makes it complicated because it kind of gets it in the way hopefully you can see what I'm doing you want to get it started See, like that right there, you want to get it almost all the way. I'd recommend putting your thumb, like, to where it can't if it were to jump. But I'm going to try to hold mine back further so you can see what I'm doing here. And then, it's real simple, really. You should just be able to push it on. You should be able to. Hang on. Yeah, see that? So that wasn't so bad, was it? Trust me, it can be way more frustrating than that. And these rails aren't really that bad. They, they kind of, I guess I can say the tolerances are, are pretty good. Like there's not a lot of slop and stuff and there's not a lot of stuff like feels too tight. They actually feel pretty good. I'm not an expert expert or anything like that, but overall, they feel pretty good. Okay, so now you've come to that point so you can do either of these, it, this doesn't really have to be in the exact order, but you're going to have to put these back in. So for me, I like to take this and you'll look, there'll be one side that's got a cutout on it, right? Kind of looks like your uh, spool bearing pin, just a giant version of it. So there'll be a hole just above where you were just working. That's got to go through there, it's got to go through there, and go to the other side. And that little cutout will slide in on the other side. So that's in. Now the only thing holding that, and you can't put it in yet, so kind of keep your reel at an angle like this, the frame. Your, uh, where'd it go? Oh boy, we lost a part. Oh, it's right here. When you pop this on, that holds that pin. So now you gotta put this back on. I should prop nah, it's got a little oil. It's got a little oil. So anyway, 
this goes in here and it should be flush so you gotta kind of move it around see that'll go flush and if you want to you can move this gear a little just to make sure it's moving it and then this, this I don't know some guy I just put it and it was it was finger tight anyway I got off by my fingers without a straight driver so that's how it's going back I'm just gonna get it and I mean not I'm not gonna crank as hard as I can I'm just gonna snug it and it should be fine so now we've got that back together now our these will be different ways on different reels if you've got a Daiwa uh, wait a minute. Which one is it? Is it Daiwa? I think the Daiwa, this is actually a screw on and threads on this side. So like you put the cover plate on and then the pin or whatever. But this one, and we'll just worry about it for today. It just kind of pops on. So you just, and both sides. And be careful, this is pretty thin plastic. I don't know how strong it is. I don't want to find out. I'm just going to take my time. Line it up, and you kind of can pop one side on, and then put the other side on. It kind of has to go down in there. Just pops on, and that's that simple. If you want to take it off, I recommend, I'll show you how to take it off. Just, I put my nail in there, and just gently pop one side off, and it pops right off. So, but it is, it, 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 it looks and feels fragile. It may not be. Maybe pretty pretty tough, but I wouldn't don't get don't get horsey with it. All right, so we've got that back together, and that is the hardest part about the whole thing. Now we've got bearings. You might want to turn it, make sure if something feels bound up, no need to put the whole reel back together. It's probably not going to get better. Tear it back apart and redo it. It should spin pretty freely. Everything's ready to go back together, right? But let me wipe my hands off before. Now you skip through this part if you're just trying to get your reel put back together. Before we go back together, I'm going to back you guys up a little bit because that was the hardest part. We're only 17 minutes in. This is early in one of my videos. Uh-oh. Where'd that go? Oh, you dirty dog. I know where that went. <laughs> and that's that's why I use a white paper towel. I was going to say, I thought that thing's supposed to have some in it. I know where it goes. Don't worry. Don't worry. Hang on. The fret. And part of this is because I had these tore apart and I was messing around. You want to set everything in order as you take it apart. Don't move it around to where it could become a basket case. So that is in and goes right. This little thing right here actually goes in here. Could have gotten by without it probably, but that's where it goes. It's just a little spacing they've put on that and you try to get it centered technically you could try to put it on the metal part first I hold it up like this All right, crisis averted, right? We got it. Now time out, 19 minutes in. For those of you that are wondering, and I was wondering, so I just did it, so I'd uh, see what I'd done. Oh, I did that, I'm gonna take this back off. I just wanted to show you what it would look like if you wanted to spend $75 just to get a frame for your Black Knight 2 that had cutouts right and you could have put that off the black knight too everything will interchange but i'm just going to show you this real quick somebody's going to want to see this on the internet somebody on youtube somewhere will want to see this switch so we're just going to put basically everything but and i could have switched that in but that would have took a long time to put that in and switch it back we're going to put everything that goes on the Black Knight 2 on just a frame 
of the dark wolf just to see what it looked like right you guys want to see that right sure you do if you don't well like i said fast forward this video to where i start putting the other one back together so we'll slap uh don't slap this handle back on let's go with this one handle drag star now no it won't work this is just a mock-up you guys ever heard that term mock-up so if any of you guys thought about it think no more this is what it would look like let me get it kind of together and then i'll show you real quick so it definitely made it look better in the front and i think that's what the Black Knight 2 shouldn't have paint. Just the side plates, maybe. They should actually have this top plate. I like that better. So, what do you guys say? Too bad there's nobody watching. I'd say ask if you think I should leave it like that. What I am going to think I'm going to do is I'm going to contact... I'm going to try to find... I'm going to try to find that line guide, I think. And put in the dark wolf for sure. Wow, that thing's free. Whoa, there's nothing in it. Looks good. It would work, but no, I'm not going to do it. What's that? Some imaginary person wants to say, well, what would it look like the other way? What kind of reel would you be left with after you did that? Well, let's, let's find out. We got the power, the technology, the capability to just, oh boy, look what I did. Look what you guys let me do. I ain't got no front plate, nose plate on there. And the nose plates won't just interchange. I guess I should show you that. But not right now. So if you change it, if you do change side plates, you got to have the nose plate that matches. They're actually way longer. I'll show you that in a second. So, yes, you can, Virginia. You could have Santa Claus next year bring you both reels and swap them around. And you would be left with actually a, whoa, whoa, Nelly. And we'll just put this handle back on. Oh, wait. Another other one. I think it's right here. So then, I'll just put it to there. You'd be left with that. Definitely, the in my mind, the uglier of the two. But still, it's all, it's kind of black with a little sparkly on it, right? Everything matches up to work. Yeah. I definitely like this on the Dark Wolf Ultra. I like the overall shape of the Dark Wolf Ultra, Ultra but I, the, it's, it's had all the life sucked out of it. That's what's murdered out, right? Take all life out of something by only black. So let me show you this. And I'm going to take it apart and we're going to put... One of these reels totally back together for you so you can see how to do it. But I'm going to show you real quick. So say if you're like, well, I actually like the... Whoa, look out, spool. Let me show you the reason you can't. It actually... You could technically go the other way. Let me let me see here. So if you tried to just put, just you wanted the little cutouts, you're like, oh, I like that, and I'm gonna get that and put that on my dark wolf altar. Other than it's a little bit different color black. The uh, hang on, you'll see. You'll see. Hopefully, you see, 
See that? They snub that up a little bit. So let's let's get this thing back to oh boy. Let's get this thing back together the way it goes. Got parts all mixed up that I don't know. Raise your hand if you think I know what I'm doing and how to put it back together. Anybody? Somebody? Okay, so that's the Black Knight 2, Dark Wolf Ultra. We need to get back together for you guys. This one we started with, tearing apart, and we're gonna put it back together. Then I'll put it together the Black Knight 2. But yeah, what they've done on that part is just how they Just that little bit, it's hard to make out, but just a little bit in the shaping of those nose pieces. So they are different as far as matching up to the other ones. So that doesn't matter because we're not, not switching around. Let's get this reel back together before something bad happens. And then I'll end this video. And if anybody's got a Black Knight 2, Dark Wolf Ultra, or any other reel that I'm sure there's going to be reels popping up on AliExpress that are based off of whichever one of these was first, the Black Knight 2, I guess. All right, whoa, where where do we go from here? I'm lost. Somebody? Anybody? Okay, I know what I'm doing. We'll start with this. And this, as long as you've had this together in here, it, it's real simple. But if for some reason you ever get sidetracked, see those that kind of little, well, if it focus, that little ramp thing, those always go down. It should be very flat on top. The little ramps match up with that little ramp, and that's what lets it pushes it up and lets it in, down and all that. So you want to put that on before you put on your big gear. This always goes on first. You gotta line it up with that bearing in there. Put the little springy springs on. That's always first. Should we put more grease on now? I'm just gonna show you guys how to put it back together. Ain't nobody got time for putting grease on. I'm not going to go into the drag clicker. The drag clicker is real simple. I was going to try to show you where it is. I'll show you on this one. This one, for some reason, sticks out more. And this one does have more grease, you can see. See right there by my pinky? There's a little pin and then a little spring behind it. And then that just turns. That's what works your drag the clicker part so if you remember this I had it all together so I'd remember how it went and it may come apart oh I'm jumping the gun this part goes first put that on then this There went. Okay, they wanted me to show you guys that. Let's tear it all apart. Let's take forever to make this video. Don't lose a pin. <sighs> this was supposed to be a half hour video, not an hour. Anyway, that's all there is to it. Let me take it back apart. You got the aluminum gear with this plastic insert. I guess to shave down on weight instead of just cutting out the aluminum gear in that shape, which I would think would be louder and last longer, but maybe not. That plastic with the metal thing may be better. So you basically just added that bottom gear looking thing with one of the, uh, these right on top of it. Then you put your gear on. Then don't forget, you got to put one of these on. That's your brake disc. That's what does the, instead of keeps it from metal to metal. So I'm not even sure how you get that other than with the magnet, but there is a spring inside there. It's still in there. And that usually never does fall out. So what you have to do is as you're putting this back on, okay, so you're going to get this close and you've got to push this spring back on. Now there should be, hopefully, yeah, the one side's a little flatter than the other. One's got a little rounded. The rounded part goes out. Flat part goes in. 
So you just push it back. Oh boy. This is where having hands like the real test come in real handy. Big ol' I think he's probably got pretty big hands too, but hands like mine, fingers, uh-uh. Not so good. What's funny is most of the guys you see on YouTube working on reels got big old mitts. Anyway, that goes in there, and it should, I think, stay. So then you just go down, and then right when you get to that bottom part, you're going to push that in with something. Oh, boy. Nope. Look what I did. You guys see that? I've actually worked on these before. I've stuck that back in before. It's not the easiest thing in the world. Let's take that back out for a minute. You want to make sure all this stuff stays down. Okay. Let's try this crazy thing again. This time, I'm going to do it a little different. I'm going to put the pin in, make sure the flat part goes in. Which is backwards now. Come on. So we're going to put that. We're going to put it back in. We are. Now I'm going to try. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, I take that back. That little C-clip thing I was talking about, that ain't the hardest part about these reels. And I think the Daiwas are like this too, but I'll be honest, I like the old school ones. If you guys have seen the one I've made, the old, what they originally made for the Daiwas and stuff, way better. So we're gonna try this differently. I'm gonna push this like that and we're gonna drop it down get in there get in there oh my god it is in don't ever take that out again that was hard that's so hard hang on drink a diet coke that got my blood pressure up all right this goes on top let's let's hurry this up that thing needs more grease, but we ain't got time for that. I'll probably tear it apart before who knows when. All right, am I ready? That, that, okay. I think that's everything. I'm looking at my parts. We got screws, that, that, that all goes on the outside. So all you have here is you got your, the internal part of the roller bearing needs to stay there and then a bearing on the outside. And then the other bearing there, it's secured. It's not going anywhere. So then you just need to kind of line up that to where it's going to slide on. And then let it slide down and be careful. Don't try to force this. This shouldn't be hard to push on. You know what I mean? You shouldn't, it shouldn't be like, oh, and then jabbing it on. It should go right on. Those springs will keep it. It would be a little springy, but it should be easy. Okay, so we got that part on. Now... What I do a lot of times, and, I'll, and I ain't gonna lie, I'll just stick one screw. These are all the same size, by the way, on the on these reels. All four, there's four screws, one on this side, and then three over here. They're all the same size. A lot of times, I'll just put one screw in, and I recommend using a little screwdriver, not in some big honking one that will uh, eat up the sides of your reel. And man, them screws, you guys see the tolerance? I don't know, they kind of look... The screws don't look that great. So we're going to run one in. Yeah, I guess we're going to, we're just going to put it all together. We're going to count on that I knew what I was doing and it's all together good. And there's not really necessary an order. You don't have to torque them down. And you don't want to go like as tight as you can go. You just want to get it snug and then like that. That's all it takes. It doesn't have to be get a bigger screwdriver and put all your force. You don't want them screws coming out. Especially on this reel or any of these plastic reels. You're you're running metal screw into plastic. If you turn too hard, 
you will strip it. I guarantee you. So just like I mentioned, go in. You know, you'll fill it. And that's why I kind of like using a little screwdriver. I can't put too crazy amount of force on it. But go in. You know, you feel it kind of get a little tight and go just a touch past that. I mean, just a, mm, just a little. Okay, so we're still all together there. Make sure. Go ahead and stick the spool in now. Oh, everything's still working. Drag clicker still intact. Now we put back together the outside part. The in internals, they're all in there. They're good to go. In just over 36 minutes, me ranting and raving and doing all this other stuff. It doesn't really take that long. If it was just me pulling one apart, switching stuff out, it would it would be simple. Now, a fun fact, on as I took these apart, these pieces were thrown in differently. Now, they're the same exact thing. One spacer is a little bit bigger, and I think it's just a matter of you need that depth for how this thing's, you know, designed. But one of them had... Uh, the spacer switched from the other and then the uh, so you need both those spacers and then this part now they had it right except they had it different ways technically and I've talked about this in other videos and the lingual if you tear the lingual apart the lingual these need to be the same way as on the mine did anyway so pay attention when you're taking the lingual apart if you're working on a lingual they actually have to be both together they have two of them on there and for the spacing I tried to turn them around like they're supposed to be and that's I'll show you how they're supposed to be now so you got the little grooves like this right so you line those up and when you push these together that's how I like it there should hang on there should be a gap they shouldn't you know they should be the opposite way and there be a gap there now you can technically and I've seen it done and and one of these was done this way. I think this one was this way, and the Black Knight 2 was the right way, or, or my way, the way I like it. But you can go this way, and the centers will meet up, but then the edges won't push together. And that gives you the springiness of the to tighten as you tighten your drag down, right? So I'm going back with my way on both. So we'll go like this, and they just go on. And double check yourself when you push them on. See that gap? They don't go flush. Now remember, if the lingual, this guy, if you're tearing into this or you're taking it off, messing with the drag or doing whatever, and you go to put it back here, you're like, oh no. If like this stack stuff won't go in right, like your drag won't loosen up right, it's because those are need to go kind of the way they're not supposed to go, the same way. So then from there, it's real simple. This little thing, and the way this... Uh, Drag stars designed this little gear looking deal goes on, and then on your star, it has the clicking part is internal. Hear that? Instead of being out here, then the teeth on here. That's most of them are designed the other way. This is only real. These, uh, I can't remember about the original black knight or the dark I, I don't own the original dark wolf this just the ultra so anyway that just goes on like that we're almost done you just put this baby on straight and don't go don't force anything if it won't go you probably don't have it on straight and you hear it start clicking and then you want to screw it down until you'll see where you got enough uh now i've just got this thing on it I've kind of was playing around. I had this on the Zephyr uh, rod, so I kind of, and that is one of the best filling knobs I've ever made. That thing just feels good. So yeah, it's done. I mean, changing out a handle is a simple process. Oh, it's not done. Look at me. This thing. This goes on like this, and technically in my mind, they don't really have to have this thing on if they don't have the springy thing but they're on like all of them so and i think that's all that is for if you were to happen to run the drag loose enough 
it helps hold the drag in place if you run a real loose drag, but most reels you end up going tighter with the drag. But anyway, you kind of have the drags, you might want to start a little tighter to make sure when you put this nut on, you get it tight enough. Because here's what I've seen happen. You'll get guys that they just put this on some, and so basically they're like this, and they put this on, and they tighten this nut up, and they're like, you know, they put a wrench on it, and I'll show you that in a second, and they get it tight. They put their little keeper on, and then next thing you know, they start to use the reel, and they adjust their drag. And then their handles, like they're like, well, how'd that happen? Well, it's because they didn't start out with the drag tight enough to get past where that little, you know, spot is. So it's that simple. Anyway, I'm gonna end this video. 41 minutes. If you guys have any questions, oh yeah, on tightening. If you don't know, 10 millimeters. I recommend getting the 10 millimeter wrench and saving your old plastic bags. It helps and it'll fit on trust me it'll go on make sure it's all the way down before you start turning that helps save your uh, anodization on your the nut then you put your keeper back on now still what do they actually call this retainer keeper lock I don't know I always get this name confused anyway it's that simple you've now officially become a real repair tech and I'm gonna send you some reels to get worked on Any questions? No? Hang on, let me see. What brand is a purple rod with wood handle? Legendary, legendary squad squad. Purple rod with the wood handle. Hang on, don't go anywhere. My videos are never as short as I want them to be. If you're talking about this rod, I've shared the link to it. The feeling, it's actually a lure star. I got it upside down. Hang on. It's a Lure Star. The name on this one, since it's that size, it's the six foot eight, uh, two piece light. They call it filling. As they go to a medium light, a medium, and the medium heavy, they change the name on that. But, uh, I think they call this the four axis carbon cloth that the rod's made out of. If you look up that on AliExpress, they'll come up with other brands that have that also. And what's funny is if you look this material up just to buy a blank, on AliExpress, the cheapest I can find for roughly this length is like 85 bucks. This rod was only a... Uh, well, 120, but then by the time to get it shipped, it was like another, you know, that it definitely adds money, $28 or something. Which I could try to, I got a deal going, I think, with the, the uh, LT fishing store. I think he, if I buy like all, any more than two or three, I think he's going to give me free shipping. So I'm going to buy more. But this rod's out in different videos, and I talked about how this is a kind of almost the wood is like a soft touch up here. Not this wood. This is polished up, kind of. Same thing with at the back. I've got my balancer deal right up on it right now. Very good rod. I'm probably going to buy the whole lineup. I do recommend it for the price. It'd be better off if you decide you want to buy two of the sizes and try to contact him and you know tell him bass and bones I sent you, and you know how many do you need to buy in order to get free shipping, and uh, you should be able to do it. All right, guys. As I get out of here. I, mean, I gotta clean it. Look at that dirt. Oh my, that thing ain't gonna catch no fish all filthy like that. And fish, they care what kind of quality stuff they get caught with, don't they? Yeah, it's good. Like I said, I recommend it. I, I've only fished it, what, two months now, maybe? So I don't have like a year or so under it. And I, I've tested it somewhat, and I will show you the ratings. Now, I always go over the ratings. I'm kind of bad about that. If you go what that rating says, you'll probably never break this rod unless you smash it in your car door or hit it with your ceiling fan. They claim 2 to 14 grams, but they only want you to run 3 to 6 pound line. And I run over that. I uh, I run 10 pound test on it, and I don't, I don't think that, you know, as long as you set your drag, 
I don't know if I could, other than high sticking it, I don't think I could break it with 10 pound test. Is it as good as my Kang Tetan 661? I don't know, I haven't gone that far to test it. That's why I'm kind of waiting to, I wanted to use it for a while before I put it under too much stress. But I have cast, up with, I've thrown 10 pound test on it, like I said, and I've thrown, uh, well, but it, it says the rating's up to 14 grams, which is, I think, half ounce, right? I've thrown half ounce and over on it, and it doesn't seem to have an issue. It is a, it's called a light, but I would call it more, it's, I don't know, it's hard to explain. I guess if you, you could call, I'd call it more of like a parabolic medium light myself, but it, it's a good rod. I like it. Like I said, I'm probably by the whole lineup. I like that. Whatever that four axis carbon cloth stuff kind of reminds me of the uh, Zodius lineup or the, uh, which was one of my favorite rods ever, the Destroyer lineup, the X7s. I had the Shading X, a little touch shorter than this rod. It reminds me of this rod a lot. And no, I kind of forget that it's a two piece. It's a very sensitive rod and it takes me to actually finally when I spot the two piece part to realize, well, that's a, that is a two piece rod because it is very sensitive. It does not fish like definitely any of the older two piece rods, but it, it's definitely better than a lot of the two piece rods that are still out on the market right now. And I don't know, let me see if I can get it. I don't know if I can get it separated. I ain't gonna mess with it. I got it stuck together the way I like it. Maybe. Oh, I got it. I got it. And I don't know what this little ball on the end, if that's supposed to help sensitivity, but it's like a metal piece stuck on the end. Let me get it to focus. Well, but yeah, the same material that the blank is made out of, this, the section that connects the two is made out of with that little ball in it. And it gives you a little lines to get line it up but i still just eyeball mine and make sure they're all straight get a good look give it a good push and as you see how hard it was to take off i put it together and started fishing it like i said almost two months now maybe longer i don't know it's been a little while and uh it wasn't going anywhere it was still stuck together good so anyway guys thanks for watching get out of here go bass bonsai and whatever you do, make sure you have fun doing it. Oh, man, I still got to put that reel together. Oh.